Well, welcome to our Tuesday encouragement for this week. Isn't the British weather absolutely wonderful? Just yesterday uh, was the longest uh, day of the year. Would you have known it from the weather? No, you wouldn't. No chance of seeing the sunrise nor the sunset. And we had plenty of rain in between. And of course, that was the story of our weekend when we should have been gathering together at Morelands College. Sadly, we needed to pull the plug on that gathering, not so much because of the rain, which we could tell from the forecast was going to disappear, but just because the underfoot conditions were looking a bit dangerous and not particularly great for our youth and children's ministry either. However, this coming weekend, we're going to try again. Uh, so we really do hope that you'll sign up to join us on Sunday morning for our physically gathered time of worship at Morelands College. That will kick off at 11 o'clock. Don't forget, we've got youth and children's ministry available out at Moorlands. And in the event, like this weekend, we need to cancel that physical gathering and head instead to our online church platform. We will still be offering youth and children's ministry uh, back at the church at 11 o'clock. So please do keep an eye out for communication from Jackie and from the team uh, about that. And we'll let you know what's happening with the physical gathering uh, before nine o'clock on Sunday morning. If we need to cancel, if you hear nothing from us, assume that it's going to be going ahead. Well, there's some really exciting stuff happening over the next couple of weeks. And yesterday you would have received an email from us if you're on Church Suite inviting you to join us for one of our retreats and fun days. Church camp sadly can't go ahead uh, because of COVID restrictions in the way it would normally happen. So there'll be no overnight camping, but we still have got use of the site out at Headlands. And we're thrilled to be able to offer the opportunity for everyone and anyone to come and join us uh, out at Headlands for um, up to two of four sessions, which last for about six hours each, so that you can come and join us to relax or to canoe, to kayak, kayak to try archery, to join in some quiet times uh, out in the beautiful spot, which is Headlands. So please do make a point of booking up for those sessions and come and join us if you can. Well, I'm really thrilled that for our Tuesday encouragement today, Ginny Bolchin is going to be sharing a poem for us from her latest book, which is called The Visit. She's going to be talking today, uh, sharing a poem about Mary as she brings the alabaster jar and offers this exuberant worship to Jesus uh, with the oil. So I hope you'll really enjoy this Tuesday encouragement today. God bless you. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, whatever it is you're going to be doing today. I just wanted to share a little bit about um, poems. Some of you know <clears throat> that I do write Christmas poems and I've been doing that for years and years and years and I love doing it. I think about somebody in the Christmas story and then I just think about what their life was like and try and write something. So there are lots of Christmas poems, um, but I also write other poems from time to time, things about happenings in my life or things from scripture. And over the years I've collected them together. And then this year, um, Christmas time, Chris, my husband said, I'm going to collect all those poems, I'm going to type them out, and I'm going to have them published. Something I'd never have done myself, I think, but he wanted to do it. And as a result, we have a little book called The Visit, um, and I'm going to share one of the poems from it. This poem is called The Alabaster Box. Um, I think you will probably guess the story that it comes from about a woman who came to visit Jesus. Um, and I'm just going to read it to you. It's The Alabaster Box. She stood outside the door, trembling, wanting to knock, fearful to enter. She clutched the box, her treasure, such fragrance, and recalled the months of saving, eating little, buying nothing, until at last, enough. She remembered those first glimpses of his face, so strong, so gentle, so at peace within, a different face, a man among men, and she had known so many. She had watched when he touched the children, loving them for themselves, had seen him hold a leper, 
talk to a crowd, loving them and willing them to understand and see beyond. And now was her time. She ran across the room and stood. The noise ceased, the heads turned, silence fell. Fearful, she searched the room with her eyes until they met his, so peaceful, waiting for her. He stretched out a hand, she ran to him. In a moment, the box was broken. The ointment spilt, the fragrance rose. She buried her face at his feet, weeping. At that moment, she saw herself ugly, wounded, unclean, longed to wash away her stain from his feet. He knew her heart, wrung with remorse, longing for a new start. Then his hand touched hers. She looked up and with his eyes, he met her need, accepted, believed in her, loved her as none other. And in his face, she saw herself as herself, as he saw her, renewed, pure, loving, forgiven, and she worshipped. Bring your worry, grief and pain, every cause you have for shame, lay it all down, lay it all down. When your cares have buried you And there's nothing left to do Lay it all down Lay it all down At the feet of Jesus At the feet of Jesus But your heart was tired Feel the worst and felt the fire Lay it all down Lay it all down Filled with all those anxious thoughts And your doubts became your God Lay it all down Lay it all down At the feet of Jesus at the feet of Jesus lay it all down 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 Yeah.